Hey guys, okay, now we're gonna see how pathogens and how PAMPs initiate the innate immune response. So remember that the innate immune response is the first line of defense, and it's how we also kickstart the adaptive immune response. So in our one of our first classes uh, in our lecture, I went over how um, in general, the innate immune response can recognize patterns that are associated with pathogens. And they can, in general, recognize when um, the, one of these patterns is not only for, for, uh, foreign, but also harmful to the body and will produce some kind of disease. And so in the last episode, we learned how um, it's PAMPs, pathogen-associated molecular patterns, are these signals to the immune response that not only is it foreign, but it's also um, harmful to the body. So some of the examples we had was uh, bacterial flagella, bacterial cilia, bacterial DNA, also parts of the virus that are different from us, so like the envelope, caspid, spike proteins, could also be viral DNA or RNA. Um, so in this example up on the board, I'm going to talk about um, flagella as the PAMP, but remember we could substitute anything in here, so like the, the spike protein for flu or a spike protein for measles virus. So we could substitute anything in here. So I'm also going to do a close-up so you can see what I'm talking about, but in general, we have uh, one of our innate immune cells here, which is the macrophage. And remember, the function of the macrophage is to slowly move around the body and find and destroy pathogens. And they do this by recognizing a PAMP, and the PAMP will bind to a very specific receptor on the surface of macrophages um, and other antigen-presenting cells like dendritic cells. So let me bring you in a little closer so you can see this. Okay, oops. So what we have here is step number one, we have our PAMP. And I've drawn a macrophage here, and here on the surface of the macrophage, we can see a particular receptor. And this receptor is called PRR, which aka Pattern Recognition Receptor. I know, there's a lot of vocab here. So this PRR, Pattern Recognition Receptor, will recognize PAMPs. So it can recognize all sorts of different PAMPs, like the flagella, the flagella that I've drawn here. So once this binding happens, a few different things will happen. So number one, um, which I've drawn the arrow all the way down to here, number six, so one of the things that's going to happen when a PAMP binds to a pattern recognition receptor is that this macrophage is going to make and release a bunch of immune signals. And the immune signals are called cytokines. So remember that cytokines are proteins and they're a big class of immune signals. And there are actually thousands of different uh, cytokines, and they each, each do different jobs. So some are going to turn on the immune response, some are going to turn off the immune response, some are going to promote the production of antibodies, and some are going to promote the proliferation of T cells. So they can do all sorts of different things. There are also immune um, signals or cytokines that are going to be released and travel up to the brain and induce physiological changes like fever. We're going to get into more details later. but um, So generally, remember that immune cells can do all sorts of different things, and they can promote different types of immune responses. Anyway, so let's continue back. We're going to go up to the other thing that happens after the PAMP binds to the PRR, the Pattern Recognition Receptor. So step number two there is called endocytosis. So this is similar to phagocytosis when we talk about how the macrophage can engulf an entire pathogen and bring it in, but this is a special kind of phagocytosis um, via this Pattern Recognition Receptor. So again, it's slightly different from phagocytosis but it's very similar. 
And what happens is, is that um, the engulfment happens, the whole pathogen is brought in into this compartment that's separate from the cytoplasm. So it's a protected compartment and it's called an endosome. So just remember, endocytosis brings the pathogen into a compartment called the endosome. And what happens, especially, and this is step number three, in the endosome is that there are special enzymes and also um, acids and other conditions that will aid in the breakdown of the pathogen into tiny little bits. And these tiny little bits are sequences of you know, whatever was ma that made up that pathogen. So it's bacterial DNA, plus pieces of the cell wall, cell membrane, and also pieces of that flagella. Um, so what's gonna happen after that is step number four is that the macrophage is gonna take one of those, one of those little bits and a very specific antigen, and it's gonna load it into a separate receptor that's also on the surface of the macrophage. Um, so we can call this loading of the antigen onto the receptor. And this receptor is meant to present antigen so that we can activate other kinds of immune cells, like activation of helper T cells, which is step number five over there. So um, we're going to talk more about this kind of receptor. Just know for now that it's called MHC major histocompatibility complex. And I will never make you write that out, so don't memorize it. Just know that it's called MHC. So again, two very important receptors on antigen-presenting cells, um, and that's the first one, which is the pattern recognition receptor. And remember, that's going to uh, find and bind the PAMPs that are on the bacteria, viruses, or other pathogens. The other, the second really important receptor is this other one on the other side. That's the um, MHC receptor that's very important for presenting antigens to other cells to activate them. So let's go over this again. Just remember two big things of um, this pathway. So one, is that once the PAMP binds to the PRR, remember that another important thing that's happening is that the macrophage is able to release a bunch of different signals that we call cytokines that will really shape what kind of immune response we get. Um, this can mean, do we want antibodies? Do we want fever? Do we want inflammation? All kinds of different things. Uh, the other arm of the pathway is where via a concept called endocytosis, which is similar to phagocytosis, the whole pathogen is brought into the cell in a very special compartment called the endosome. Inside the endosome, you're able to break up the pathogen into little pieces, and those are all of our different antigens. And these antigens are loaded onto a special receptor called MHC, and those MHC receptors are really important for presenting the antigen to other immune cells and to activate them. So a big class is the helper T cells. So remember, back to the beginning, PAMPs are the signal to innate immune cells to activate. And activating will mean releasing of immune signals called cytokines to recruit other immune cells to the site of infection. And then third, to kickstart adaptive immunity versus uh, via antigen pre presentation. So, ooh, close up. So the important thing to remember is um, is also that I can't remember. Oh yeah, the important thing to remember is we've been throwing out the term antigen presenting cell or antigen presentation. So there are only a few kinds of immune cells that can do this antigen presentation to activate helper T cells, for example. So macrophages are one, dendritic cells are another, and in some cases, B cells can also present antigen in this way. Um, so no other cell is able to do this. So that means that here, instead of the macrophage, we could also draw 
a dendritic cell and the same exact thing would happen. And also remember that the PAMP could be a lot of different things. So it could be the cilia, the flagella, or parts of the virus. Um, so I think that's it for PAMPs and how they activate uh, the innate immune response. Next, we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna get back to talk about that receptor for presenting antigen or MHC and the different kinds there are. Okay.